This week, I interviewed a former NFL player. This is what happened. I do this personally. I'm the first of every month. It is my money day. All right, guys. So today, we have a pretty uh, packed, busy day. So um, I was going to let you know what is happening today. So I'm up 5 o'clock. We go out, take the dog out. Um, we go for a little jog. Come back in, start the day, get breakfast going. Breakfast is coffee because coffee is wonderful. Um, so we do that. And then uh, between like 5.30ish and uh, about 7, um, 7.30, I get a lot of work done. I work on some stuff for the videos. I do research. I put scripts together. Um, I edit quite a bit in the morning too. Um, that's my typical morning time. And then I head to work. So that's kind of the beginning part of the day. Um, I'm going to try to film as much of that as I can. And uh, just, just so you guys are aware, I work as an auditor and an accountant. So I can't bring my, my camera in to film while I'm at work because there's some sensitive information in there. So that's not going to happen. But what I can do, what I can do is film up to me going into work and then me leaving to go to lunch and stuff like that. So I'll be able to do that for you guys. And really cool opportunities today. I'm interviewing a former NFL player the channel it's gonna be great i will show you guys what's going on with that um and that's gonna make a really cool video All right, guys, so I got some coffee going, and uh, just so you guys know, uh, I, buy, I pay about $11, uh, no, $12 for a pound of coffee, and I'll get about 25 pods of coffee out of that. So that's a net cost of about uh, 48 cents per pot, so 24 cents a cup, which is pretty good. It's a lot better than uh, five bucks you might spend elsewhere, so. But that's how I get my day going, how I get my caffeine, how I get started, because I have relatively long days, as you see. I start my day at 5, and I go to about 9 or 10. So, yeah, stick around with me. It'll be an interesting day. So, guys, my week has been absolutely ridiculous in the best of ways. Let me break down what has happened, what has gone on and how I was able to interview a former NFL player, Mr. Corey Proctor, this week. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, so my background, uh, I've done a couple different things. I've been involved in accounting and tax and audit. Audit's more recent, but I've been involved in tax and accounting for a total of almost 10 years in combination now. So um, pretty well versed in that. Um, and then I do, on the side, I do uh, consulting for personal finance, so investing, debt, uh, consolidation, really all that stuff, help people get their financial lives sorted, and then also I make videos about all that, so given that I'm free for people that like typically would pay like two or $300 an hour, they get totally for free hours and hours of content, um, that's kind of my heart and what I do, because I've noticed there's a lot, a huge gap in just basic financial knowledge. And so my heart really is to help bridge that a little bit if I can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, kind of getting back to that, I mean, you know the importance. People, most of most people don't know what's going on with their own life. I mean, that's why we have a, a big chunk of our nation that lives paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, they don't have four or $500 in the, bu in the bank for an emergency. And yeah. um, <clears throat> that's, that's what's really cool about what's been going on, especially with the pandemic is, all right, you got a lot of people freaked out. Well, look, this is a good learning learning opportunity right now because Definitely. if you're not if you're not prepped, nobody prepares for bad times. I go, and the reason you get upset that um, somebody else grows in bad times is because they're usually prepared for it. And that's, that's exactly um, right. Yeah. So that's why I love those are good because okay, we can we can implement just some super basic practices and uh, and get get those going for somebody where, all right, if you're prepared for bad times, that means you can take advantage of the opportunity in bad times. And, uh, and so 
where if somebody else is struggling, you're prospering, right? You're doing well. And so uh, that's, that's why this stuff has been really cool this year. I know a lot of people are still struggling, but it's just because a lot of us don't know. Right? A lot of people don't, aren't aware of just some very basic uh, financial decisions they need to be making or they need to be practicing. And, and so that's why it's a lot of fun. Where are you focusing? Are you, I mean, is it pretty balanced across the schedule with uh, the, the actual financial planning portion, investment planning portion, or are you more, are you heavier on the tax side or is it pretty balanced in between? Um, so I, I do currently work for a CPA firm, uh, so 40 hours a week roughly, depending on the season, is spent there, and then um, my off time is spent consulting that I do, and the planning that I help do, and then, you know, life insurance plug in there too. Um, that takes up maybe like kind of 20% of my time. Um, it's not a huge, huge time investment. What it is right now is it's in my, my YouTube stuff. I've been trying to get that going, and I have a sizable phase so far, and I'm working to grow that, and I know there's... Um, a lot of scalability there, so I'm investing more and more time as I've been able to to continue that because I make a video for, for 10 people or 10,000 people, it takes the same amount of time to make. I was gonna, I was gonna go look up your YouTube page, Nate Buck. Taxes, come on, you dang man, you got oh, 1200, 1200 plus subscribers, right? Yeah, I'm working on it. Nice, that's a, I don't have that much. There you go. Well, look at that. These are professional videos being made right now. You're hardcore. I like it. That's pretty cool. Well, you got some pretty good views on some. Well, shoot, I, I don't know if you want anything more to know about me, but if you ask away, I'm an open book. So. Um, I, I, have a few, I got a list, actually, a few questions here, if that's okay. So um, when, you, when you signed on, what was, the, what was the absolute dumbest thing you spent money on when you signed on? Dumb, dumbest thing I probably bought money on it was, or, or spent on, I bought two motorcycles. And, and they were awesome motorcycles, but I didn't mean to spend that. That was just a, that was totally a emotional buy. It was cool. Yeah. Um, and, and I got that out of my system. I still love motorcycles. They're still awesome, right? But, uh, but I had one that was all raked out and it was, uh, it was custom, custom made out of Manitowoc, Wisconsin. It was really cool. And, but that was just a show bike. Like I, there was no functionality to that bike whatsoever. Yeah, you know? Couldn't turn it hard. Couldn't actually take that on a trip at all. And so, um, and then the other one I had was it was a uh, Harley Rocker C, which is like their version of of like a chopper bike, but it was super okay. small. But I thought it was so cool looking that I couldn't I couldn't even see the fact that I I looked like an elephant on a tricycle. <laughs> I, uh, and so, anyways, I bought those both, both those bikes and then I'm selling them later for a lot bigger discount, right? But um, that was that was the biggest that was that was the biggest thing, dumb things that I bought for sure. But those were big ticket items that I didn't need to be spending on. I mean, I could have put that money in my brokerage or something else and and made money on it, and or at least carried a loss forward. And, and got some sort of credit towards that versus uh, just being saying goodbye to the money. So in that time, flip side, what was the, what was, what was the smartest thing you bought at that time? The smartest things I bought? Well, shoot, I, I, that's when I got, when I was playing is when I got introduced to my advisor. And, and thank goodness she was good. There's a lot of garbage out there uh, for advisors, but uh, she, she was excellent. So she put my money to work. We'd do it little chunks at a time. Because uh, I would get paid during the season, right? That's when we got all our pay, and so I do it chunks at a time, and I, I let that money sit and her manage it. Now I asked a lot of questions, and I learned a lot from her, so she learned me up really well. But <clears throat> I kept, for the most part, I let her work uh, and manage that. And shoot, you're talking about so many years later, that stuff that grew even going through the financial crisis. A portion of that money. Um, <clears throat> even going through that, you know, I, I came to a way better place uh, post football than I ever was during football. And, and so when you want to, I mean, everybody likes seeing their money grow. So not to say we can't guarantee anything, right? We can't guarantee anything, but um, she did a great job and that was pretty cool to watch that happen. So I like that. If you're going to give one bit of advice to someone starting out, just learning all these things, what would you think the number one thing to uh, to start doing? 
Number one, number one, number one thing is start tracking things. I put wh whether it's your own spreadsheet, whether you get one of these free apps, <clears throat> whatever. Is I, I would put uh, I do this personally on the first of every month is my money day, and so <clears throat> I, I look back at the previous month and I add up what I made, I add up what I spent. On, on all accounts. And so what that forces me to do is I got to go into my credit card accounts. I got to go into my bank accounts. I got to go into anything else that I might have. I got to see uh, what money went in, what money went out. And all I'm doing is mastering my cash flow. That's all I'm doing. And so uh, I tell people to do that and dive in and just, just look at what's happening. And just by doing that, you end up having a huge awareness of what's going on with your money and the behaviors that are going into it. And, and so here's the thing. That's number one for anybody. You do that on the first of every month and you do it religiously. Um, I promise you at some point you're going to start getting in the green because your behavior will start following. You'll have like a whole lot of old oh crap moments. I didn't realize I was spending that. And, and so you start having those moments. Well, now you'll start creeping into the green and you have more excess money going into your bank account. Um, and now you got to decide something to do, decide to do something with that money. And, and now you can start putting it away for retirement. You can start, I should say for a, a vacation if you want to, right? But you can start putting it into some places where you weren't able to put before because you didn't master your money before you didn't master cash flow. Uh, but that's that's number one I would leave with anybody. Do Money Day on the first of every month and look back at what you, what you what you brought in, what you went out. Uh, measure what you want to improve. Do a monthly like run financial for your life essentially personally. Those two things, perfect, awesome. Subscribe to eight bucks. <laughs> That is it, guys. That is the number one thing that millionaire, wealth manager, business extraordinaire, and former NFL player Corey Proctor recommends, and that is to track your expenses. That's massive, absolutely huge, really practical advice, guys. If you do anything at all, ever, start with that. Start tracking your expenses. See where your money goes. Once you realize the areas that you're weak in, in overspending, you will very clearly want to fix that and start to set yourself on a better financial path. So if you like this video, I have a few more up here that I think you may enjoy as well. One is about saving money and the other is about how to get started investing. That is all for me for this week and I'll see you next time. Bye.